My name is James Rigney. I went in the 31st replacement draft on February 19th at 9.45. And when I first hit the beach, it wasn't anything going on. I thought we were just going to be a cakewalk. But it wasn't long before everything turned loose. And uh, I stayed in the, as a replacement. I joined the E Company 2nd Battalion, 28th Marines, on the 5th of March and fought with them all the way up to Kitana Point. And I got wounded on the 22nd day of March. My name is John Shepherdly. I, like the rest of them, joined the Marine Corps because I thought it was a thing to do. Anyhow, when we get to the beach, I, well, I carried a BAR, Browning Automatic Rifle, all through training. Uh, blasted thing weighed 20 some pounds. I carried it all through training for approximately a year. Hit the beach and run about 200 yards down to the right side of us. Mortars were dropping out in the water pretty soon. One come a little closer. Got some shrapnel in the arm. But that VAR, a piece of shrapnel hit it in the, right in the receiver, put a dent about like the side of my thumb in it. Had that been a little closer, why well, I went through, probably through the side of my head. But anyhow, I got wounded, went off the island, come back couple of days afterwards and stayed on seven more days and got wounded again. And that's about my, well, that's my chore. Hey, what are you going to do for me? Say so. Uh, I'm one lonely and I'm chick, I'm chicky. I had, I'm 95 right today. And, <laughs> and I, I went with Uncle, or Uncle Dave Severance, and we went all the way on the island, and good Lord didn't hit me. So I'm glad I'm here today. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you all. Is that about right? I want to ask you one thing, Keith. You were the leader of these folks through most of the battle. Everyone hears the name Lieutenant Schreier, who led the, the people up the mountain. You got to the top of that mountain. Why don't you tell us how that happened, and then we're going to wrap it up right there. We, uh, the platoon, these men, we uh, were supposed to be in reserve. And we were, in a, we were in a tank. We weren't in the landing craft with the front that the bow went down. We were in t uh, the, t the tank, the one that's represented in you. Uh, anyway, uh, it's like I say, I have trained the entire company right up, but I took the third platoon and t was to be the reserve. Well, as it turned out, when we landed, we couldn't land uh, where everybody was landing. We were in the 10th wave. They keep writing it up as the 11th. We was in the 10th wave. And uh, they landed every five minutes. So, it, but by the time we got there, that was just a, <laughs> a total destruction. Dead Marines, blowed up tanks, blowed up everything, and we landed over to one side, and our platoon landed right at the base of the mountain. And, and I don't know from my experience as a young man working with the government and working other things in the field, I saw real quick how to get to where we wanted to go. Well, when we got to the point where we were supposed to be, the rest of the company was not there, just the captain. And here's a little bit, about three or four men. The rest of them uh, that was supposed to be there to fight were not there. They're still out there in, the, in their uh, circle trying to find a place to land. We landed. So the captain ordered us, this platoon, ordered us across the island. Well, luckily, luckily, I had had time to stand. By the way, to tell you, the Japanese were deeply dug in. 
And I want to tell you, you're going to <laughs> you're going to be confronted with that. You young ones, you're going to be confronted. These people we're fighting now are deeply dug in. They're not up fighting <laughs> with the tanks and the blah 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 blah. They're, they're, <laughs> they're dug in, and you better secure your, everything on top of the ground because they're underground and they can destroy everything on top of the ground. So, and as they did the big building. So uh, it's time. We, we, uh, we would love to stay here and talk about what happened and help you share this man's wealth of knowledge for the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes or 50 minutes or two hours or whatever it took. But these fellows are, are specifically invited right now to get up from here, go out in board vans and go over to the wreath laying at the Iwo Jima Memorial. And that's a wreath laying in honor for their friends. So. We have to bid farewell. I want to remind you again, there's a book called The Bloody Battle for Suribachi. Richard Wheeler was one of these folks. He's ill, not with us today. Look on the internet, find his book, read it. It's a wonderful pictorial history of what these fellows did and what was going on. And uh, if you will please, uh, give some honor to these folks and we're finished. <laughs>